Hello everyone and welcome to this short presentation of the Hyperion EOS 1420i NET3 charger. It is a 550 watt capable charger for all the popular chemistries, LiPo, LiFi, nickel metal hydride and so on, everything basically that you can think of. The charger is physically not very big, it's you know, very handy indeed. It does have two fans in the back, but no connectors on the right side. It has two balance connectors for each 7S on the front. It has a net connector also for networking two chargers. It has a temp sensor, which is optional, and a USB port for interfacing with the charger with a computer for various purposes. I would like to show you how to set up the charger. This is just unboxed, so this is uh, very much in the uh, in the factory state. This charger we would like to use for a 3300 Hyperion LiPo G3 4S pack for this demonstration. This is virtually empty, this pack, so it'll show you the capabilities of the charger in speed charging. But let's get it set up. Let me show you how to do it. We're looking at memory slot number one. We can change that by pressing enter and then we can toggle up to 20 slots, which you can define individually. By going down once, you can set the battery type, and since we're charging LiPo, that's already correct, but it is way too small. This is currently set at 1S. We press Enter, then go up until it says 4S, and confirm with yet another Enter. And this way we proceed through the menus. We need to go to 3300 here. There we go. Charge current is where it gets interesting. Oh, we can only go to 6.6 .6 amps, and this is because the user settings of the charger will allow us to, in the user setup, to define certain things, such as what is the maximum C that your LiPos are capable of. Since we're charging Hyperion LiPos, we are capable of charging them with 6C. So after setting that, we will go back into the mode of the where we were before and increase the 6.6, .6, can now go way beyond. So we can actually go six times 3,300, which should come very close to 20. Let's see. 19.8. There we go. And that's basically all we have to do. We can do a number of other things. This is uh, the terminal capacity selection system, uh, which is uh, in most of the Hyperion chargers. It allows you to have the charger break off the charging process a little early in this case at 95% and this makes all the sense in the world unless you're a competition pilot or driver because the last 5% takes a very long time compared with the rest of the charge. So we have set it up like that and you can set up what the action should be. You can toggle between that the charger actually stops or it continues if you're busy talking to a friend or whatever, you'll get the full charge anyway. So let's go. Let's start by checking up out the LiPo and see what it does in terms of the current state. This is the Hyperion EOS Sentry a LiPo checker. It tells us that we have just about 31% left in this battery, which means it's virtually empty. So that's the state we are starting out with. So I'm putting that away again. I'll connect it to the balance adapter, and the 4S connector, like that. And I'll then use my Dean's connector. And all I have to do now is go to the memory one that we set up before. It's ready to charge at 19.8 amps on a 4S 3300 milliamp pack. To start, press enter. Confirm that you want to start in solo mode. It now checks our setting versus the battery. And we are asked to confirm that, yes, we do have four cells connected. And off we are. Now, the, the interface here tells us that we are... This is a charge current that we're seeing here, it's ramping up towards uh, our maximum uh, charge rate that we have defined and this is the voltage of the pack which will increase also during the charge and then we have the duration up in the upper right corner. As the charger is uh, ramping up, um, it will of course also check the state of the battery, the balancer that is built in will measure all the individual cells through the balance connector wire and the balancer is greatly integrated with the charging circuitry of the charger, meaning that if any one cell is showing a sign of being too high uh, and thereby in danger of being overloaded, 
the balancer will instruct the output of the charger to stop charging or at least to pause it or turn it down until that everything can be balanced out before anything uh, bad happens. Now you see the charger going to zero here. You'll see that once in a while during the charge process and it returns at full steam right after that. It does that to make measurements that are more precise than when the um, when the charging is going on at full rate so it can actually better measure through the balance connector. We are now six minutes into the charge and as you can see on the amps here the charger has already started turning down, way down for the charging current and this is in order to keep the, the cells not exceeding 4.2 volts per cell. So this is the nature of LiPo charging which you probably already know. But the charger will now go towards zero uh, in the charging amps and it'll be done. So let's come back. In eight minutes flat we managed to charge this 3300 4S pack to 95% of its capacity. The reason we're setting this TCS uh, end capacity at 95% is that the last 5% to charge that will take probably another eight minutes. We can start, we can try setting that up and see how far it'll go. Um, let's go ahead and do that, which means I have to terminate the charge. I'll then go down until I reach the 95 and increase that to 100. And now we're at the end of a complete LiPo charge uh, process. It's to 100% now. That took an additional 3 minutes and 45 seconds to reach that. The charger is done. The noise you hear in the background, by the way, is not the charger. The fans are not even running. This is a different apparatus that you hear. But it's done. So in 11 minutes 45 you have a completely charged pack. If you terminate it at 95% in 8 minutes flat you will be flying this 4S 3300 pack again from MT with the new ES1420i Net3 from Hyperion.